This is the all-new BMW M2. It might be the smallest full-fat M car you can buy, but it's shaping up to be one of the best performance cars on sale. Why? Well, in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Say what you like about BMW designs these days, at least they're not boring. There's always plenty to talk about. It's only been a few weeks since the brutal XM was revealed, and now we get treated to a new M2 that looks like this. It's not pretty in the traditional sense, but it will definitely turn heads though maybe for the wrong reason. Anyhow, the silhouette is similar to the standard M240i Coupe. There's a long flat bonnet, a steeply rate windscreen, and a sloping roof line. Okay, so the M2's carbon fiber roof is all new. That's all fairly normal. It's below this though, where things start to get weird. And by weird, I mean very square. The front bumper has gaping intakes cut into it to feed cold air into the engine and brakes. But they aren't sharp and angular like the ones on the old M2. The central intake is a massive rectangle and the ones on each side are perfectly square. Well, almost. It's like BMW bought a new tool that only cuts 90 degree angles and they couldn't wait to use it. Anyway, the Kidney Girls are quite subtle compared with some recent BMW M cars. Yes, I'm looking at you, XM. But the M2's frameless grille design makes it look like someone's stolen a piece of trim off your brand new BMW. At the side, you get some thick side skirt and a pair of signature door M mirrors with extra aerodynamic flicks. There are also some M2 exclusive alloy wheels that measure 19 inches at the front and 20s at the back. Speaking of the back, you also get a brand new rear bumper with a contrasting black diffuser, which probably doesn't do all that much diffusing. Plus, there's some new exhaust tips. The M240i gets some trapezium shaped tips, but the M2 has four round exhausts just like the M3 and M4. There's no doubt that this is the most aggressive looking 2 Series ever, but do you like the new design? Or maybe you prefer the old M2. I'll put a pinned comment below so you can actually vote on which of those is your favourite, the old M2 or this new one. The previous generation M2 used loads of hand-me-down parts from the old M3 and M4, and this is one of the reasons why it was so good. Thankfully, BMW hasn't changed that recipe for the new version, so it gets lots of bits borrowed from the brand new M3 and M4. The most important ingredient is the engine. It's a 3.0-litre twin-turbo straight-six, though in the M2 it makes 460 horsepower. That's a whopping 90 horsepower more than you got in the old M2, and it's 10 horsepower more than you got in the old BMW M2 CS. In fact, it's only 20 horsepower less than you get in the standard non-competition versions of the M3 and the M4. What's even more impressive is that this new M2 makes 550 newton meters of torque. That's exactly the same as you get in the standard spec versions of the current M3 and M4. So this entry level M car could be about to upset its bigger brothers. But before I move on, let's have a listen to what this new M2 sounds like. <laughs> In the UK, you can only get the M3 and M4 with an automatic gearbox, but the new M2 comes with the option of a six-speed manual. BMW has fitted manual versions with a gear shift assistant that can rev match for when you want to shift down, but you can always switch this off if you fancy doing it yourself. You could get the old M2 with a manual or an automatic gearbox as well, but that car's auto was a seven-speed dual clutch unit. It worked well when you're up to speed, but it could be really temperamental when you try to launch it. The new M2 comes with a version of the same eight-speed torque converter automatic you get in the new M3 competition and M4 competition, so it should launch much better than the old M2. The new BMW M2 is noticeably larger than the old model though. It's over 11 centimeters longer and almost two centimeters wider than the car it's replacing. The left and right side wheels are also set further apart than before. This track width is now exactly the same as on the latest M4. Unfortunately, when you make a car bigger, you usually make it heavier. And that's exactly what has happened to the new M2. If you got the old M2 competition with the manual gearbox, it weighed 1,550 kilos. This new model with a six-speed manual gearbox weighs 1,700 kilos kilos. That's 150 kilos heavier than the old car, so it'd be like you're carrying two passengers around with you the whole time. In fact, this new M2 weighs exactly the same as the new M4 manual. Pick an M2 with an 8-speed automatic gearbox and it's even heavier. That car weighs 1,725 kilograms. Surprise, surprise, that's exactly the same as the automatic M4 competition. Despite borrowing loads of parts from other BMW M cars, there's one very important difference between the new M2 and the latest M3 and M4. You can't get the M2 with X-Drive four-wheel drive, or well, not yet anyway. BMW hasn't actually confirmed if it'll make a four-wheel drive M2, but the latest M240i comes with four-wheel drive as standard, and both the cars use the same basic platform. So there's a chance that BMW might develop an M2 competition, or maybe even an M2 CS with four-wheel drive and more power. Maybe it'll have the same four-wheel drive system as the M4. 
How does all this affect the new M2's performance though? Well, pick a car with a manual gearbox and BMW says it will do 0-60 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds. That's a tenth of a second quicker than the old M2 competition manual and only a tenth of a second slower than the old manual M2 CS. It's actually the same time as the brand new 653 horsepower BMW XM takes it in 0-60 miles an hour and that's the most powerful BMW M car ever made. But that's not all. This new M2 is even quicker if you go for the 8-speed automatic gearbox instead. These versions will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.1 seconds. That's a tenth of a second quicker than the old automatic M2 competition. But how do these numbers compare with other small performance cars? Well, top shelf hot hatches from Audi and Mercedes are a little bit quicker than this new M2 off the line. The AMG A45S does 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds and the Audi RS3 will do it in 3.8 seconds. Although both of these cars are four wheel drive. But what about top speed where four wheel drive doesn't really help you? Well, the BMW M2 with the optional driver's pack, which removes the speed limiter, lets it hit 177 miles an hour. That's about 10 mile an hour faster than the range topping AMG A45S, but it's three mile an hour slower than an RS3 fitted with the RS3 dynamic pack. BMW has fitted plenty of chassis bracing to the new M2 to make sure it's stiffer than the standard 2 Series Coupe. There are new metal rods connecting the suspension strut towers to the bulkhead, and you get extra metal sheets called shear panels underneath the front and rear subframes. The M2 also has extra metal bracing around the rear windscreen pillars and under the boot floor. This will sound good to anyone who had an old E46 M3. Those have a reputation for cracks forming in the boot floors and rear subframe mounts. Other upgrades include the standard fit M-Spec rear differential and adaptive suspension. These both work in the same way as in the M3 and M4, and you can adjust how they feel when you're driving by switching between the usual Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus modes. The new M2 comes with a huge dual screen infotainment display that stretches from the driver's side all the way across the centre of the dashboard. It comes with all the usual smartphone mirroring technology you'd expect, and it runs a few M-specific features including the M-Drift Analyzer and M-Lap Timer. But that's not the only sporty upgrade for the new M2, there's plenty of contrasting M-coloured stitching all over the cabin. And you get new heavily bolted sports seats as standard. But if that's not racy enough for you, you can pay extra for some leather trim buckets with carbon backs. These don't just look fancy, they help save almost 11 kilos compared with the standard seats. And you don't have to worry about these fancy seats taking up too much space in the back either. The new M2's wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and rear wheels, is more than 5 centimetres longer than the old M2. You get some pretty serious brakes on the new M2. The front discs measure 380mm across and they're gripped by six piston calipers. The rear discs are almost as big. They're 370mm in diameter and come with a single piston floating caliper. These can painted blue as standard, but you can pay a bit extra to get them in red. The M2 comes with the same dual mode braking system as the new M3 and M4 as well. This means you can choose from comfort and sporty braking modes that give you varying amounts of assistance and pedal feel. This means you can easily switch between settings for everyday driving and track driving without having to break out the spanners. The new BMW M2 goes on sale in the UK in May 2023 and will cost from £61,495. That's about £900 more than a Mercedes AMG A45S and it's almost £9,000 more than a new Audi RS3. Now that sounds like a lot. But remember, the M2 is more like a pocket-sized M4 than a tuned-up hot hatch. And one of the best things about the new M2 is that it costs about £18,000 less than a new M4 competition. Does it mean it's one of the best value BMW M performance cars on sale? Well, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'll let you know as soon as I drive it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to watch more videos, you just click on those windows there. And if you haven't done so already, I suggest you subscribe to this channel by just clicking on the Carwire logo there. And if you do that, also make sure you click on the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you'll be alerted when we make a new upload. Thanks for watching.